Hey everyone, today I want to tell you a little bit more about this 4K version of the Beta 85X. It's got that Cadex Tar Seer camera system in the front. Uh, one camera is for FPV, but the other one records 4K video to an onboard DVR. And that is pretty impressive for a drone in this size. Uh, and I know it's something that a number of you are going to be interested in. Uh, there's other interesting components on this build as well, which is cool, but I'm not sure I agree with the more is more kind of philosophy that seems to be going into these. Uh, you see, not only is this drone super expensive, it's also super heavy. And because of that, the acro performance uh, is really pretty poor. Uh, you're not going to want to rip around outside the way that you would with other builds, uh, but maybe that's not a deal breaker for you. Maybe you want to fly slower and smoother um, and do that scene whoop kind of filming, uh, and maybe it'll open up opportunities for you, which would be cool. But if you're looking to spend this kind of money on a drone, I think you ought to have a realistic expectation of what it can and cannot do for you, and that's why I am making this video. But you know me, I don't want to just go slow, so I thought I'd try my skills at some chase cam footage. Check this out. That was super fun. So I do want to show you some more of that footage. It's going to be at the end of this video. Uh, but I also want to show you the components and what happens when you try to fly this in acro. Uh, the thing you need to understand is that this drone weighs 89 grams all by itself. And it's designed to go with a 450 million power battery like this one from Beta FPV. Uh, Tattoo also makes a battery like this. Uh, they're pretty much the same. It goes in here, and that's going to bring the flying weight up to 141 grams. Uh, still just two inch props. To put that in perspective, imagine you had a lighter weight build like my Shutterbug 85, um, and then you stuck a GoPro session on the top of it and a 450 million power battery on the bottom. That's how much weight we're talking about with this build. So I'm telling you, it's heavier than it looks. Uh, and that is definitely gonna have an impact on how you fly. Uh, so let me show you my maiden flight that I had with this uh, because I hit a couple of different flying styles in that and I think you'll get some good examples. All right, before I take off, I suggest you click on the gear icon and make sure your YouTube viewer is at 2160p 4K resolution. That'll give you the best image even if you're not on a 4K device, uh, that'll give you the best bit rate just because of the way the compression works. Take a look at the grass and the tree leaves in this shot. As you can see, this Cadex Tarsier camera is capable of capturing quite a bit of detail when the camera is steady. Unfortunately, you often lose that sharpness when the drone is moving. Take a look at the tree line now. That's not actually motion blur. That is from the vibration of the props. And so sometimes it'll be there, sometimes it won't. Uh, sometimes it'll affect the whole image or part of the image. Uh, normally I wouldn't nitpick a camera quite so much, but if you're buying this drone specifically for the purpose of 4K cinematography, then I think you ought to have an eye out for that. Sometimes the results are quite nice. I'm just showing you the results that I got. Um, so hopefully you can judge for yourself if you think uh, this setup is going to give you the image quality that you're looking for. The camera has a bunch of different settings and some different recording modes. I didn't really mess with the settings. Uh, so this is the stock settings right here. Uh, I just made sure it was in 4K 30 frame per second mode. And I did turn the bit rate all the way up uh, to make sure I was getting the best quality that I could. This file was 2.6 gigabytes on my hard drive. The motor sound you're hearing is captured from the drone itself. I decided to let you hear that uh, because I think it gives you a better idea of what the motors are doing as I fly around here. One thing that I really like about the Tarsier camera uh, is that the FPV video is actually really quite good. The light handling and color and everything on this FPV feed, uh, I could always see clearly where I was going. This is definitely way better uh, than any Whoop camera or uh, better than any 14x14 camera that I've seen. Um, I would rank it with other 16x16 type micro cameras. It's kind of a nice view up here, uh, but I am pretty high up, 
So to come down, I figured I'd do a roll and then dive down next to the trees, and this is what happened. Yeah, not so good. Uh, that was an epic washout. Um, maybe if I had used a little bit more throttle sooner, it would have been better. Uh, but only to a point. Uh, this is a natural consequence of the high weight and the small props. Since the dive didn't go so well, I thought I'd try something different. Uh, do a little bit of proximity flying. This drone is pretty small, so you can fit through some small places, and that's always fun. I want to try some more acro moves and see how that goes. Uh, so here I thought I'd do a roll over the trees. That's a move that I do a lot, uh, and it's really cool when it works well. And it looked like it was almost going to work, and then wash out again. And one last thing I want to say about the camera for now is that they do make a neutral density filter that covers both of the lenses. Um, I didn't have that, and so I wasn't using it. I do think it's a little weird that they made an ND filter that covers both of the lenses. I can't think of any reason why I would want to dim or cause motion blur in my FBV feed. Okay, I had to try it. Power loop time, go into 100% throttle, throw myself backwards, and yeah. When you lose control that badly, it's actually pretty scary. Um, I feel like I got lucky. I easily could have lost this drone by getting it stuck up in one of those trees or something. It's probably possible to do a big power loop with this quad, but it would definitely be uh, at the outer limits of its ability. So if you're going to try something like that, uh, please make sure there are no people around. If you hit somebody with this, you're going to owe them more than an apology. Well, we're getting closer to the end of the flight, so I hope this gave you a good look at how the drone performs in different situations. I know for myself, I probably won't be flying it this way again. Um, I just don't think it's well suited to acrobatic flight. But again, that may be okay depending on how you want to use it. I know some people who get Cine Whoops uh, get it specifically to record HD footage uh, inside of buildings, in tight spaces, and around people. Those are situations where having the Whoop style frame is actually really helpful. And so I believe that this drone probably could do that, um, but unfortunately I haven't had a chance to get some footage like that. I actually found it pretty difficult uh, to fly this at slow speed, um, or at least to do so smoothly. And again, that also comes down to the weight. When you've got a lot of downward thrust, uh, it doesn't take very much tilt to turn that into a lot of horizontal momentum. So if you want to do that kind of filming, I suggest you turn your rates way, way down. All right, that's probably enough flight footage. Let's move on. Uh, that flight was four minutes and 10 seconds long with this 450 milliamp hour 4S battery. That's pretty good, but then again, uh, this is a pretty large battery in terms of watt hour capacity. If you already have one of these, I'd be very interested to know how the Jello in your 4K video compares to what I just showed. For me, sometimes it's pretty bad and sometimes it's not. When I reviewed the previous version of the 85X with the Cadex Turtle, um, I showed how I was able to eliminate vibrations there using some soft packaging foam that you just cut and put under the canopy. Uh, so I'm hoping we can do something similar here, although it is a different canopy, so it's going to take some experimentation. Um, if you've already found something that works well for you, I'd love to hear about that down in the comments below. Unfortunately, I think it might be difficult to eliminate all of the vibration because after all, these props have to spin at really high RPMs just to be able to maintain a hover because it's carrying all that extra weight. Now, Beta FPV says that if you use the neutral density filter on the front, um, that that will help to eliminate jello. And as a photographer, I'm not really sure how that could be. The neutral density filter is going to reduce the amount of light coming into the sensor, and that's going to cause it to do a longer exposure per frame, which is going to translate into more motion blur. That motion blur um, can look very nice. It can make it look smoother and more flowing, um, and it might help to mask some of the effects of Jello, but it's certainly not going to make your image any sharper. Another thing that's important to know is that the high motor RPMs are going to affect the amount of noise. Compared to other Whoop style drones, this is going to be a lot louder and it's going to be a higher pitch sound coming from the props. And that's going to be a factor if you want to fly this close to people. Uh, one of the advantages of small builds like this is that sometimes they can go unnoticed or even if people see it, it doesn't sound scary and doesn't really draw attention to itself. Uh, in comparison, this one is definitely going to draw more attention to itself. And I wanted to give you um, an example of that. So here is one of my other builds. This uh, was my Shutterbug 85 HD that I made a video about. And I moved these components onto this cool Speed Racer theme frame that uh, Brian Graves made for me. Um, so that's pretty cool. But this is basically 1103 motors, 2S, 
flight controller, uh, 2S battery, but it does have the Caddx Turtle camera. So both of these are HD, um, but this one, the flying weight is dramatically less than this one. And let me see if I can show you the difference in the sound. This drone does have a pretty cool look though. I've got to give it that. Um, I've talked about how it flies and how you might use it. So for the rest of the video, I want to say a little bit about the components. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. You can read uh, the spec sheets for yourself, um, but I do like to build and tinker. And so new components are always interesting to me. And literally every component on this is new compared to the earlier 85X HD. And so I want to go through some of those changes and then uh, if you do buy one of these, you're going to have a hard time getting it to even start recording. There's some steps that you have to do, and as far as I know, they're not documented, um, and you're not going to guess. So I'll show you how that works. If we flip it over, the first thing you'll notice is that it has a carbon fiber brace connecting all four motors and going right through the center here. Um, that's designed to make the frame more rigid, uh, which can improve the flight characteristics. When you have a lot of weight and you have a lot of torque, uh, that can flex the frame, and Betaflight really doesn't like that. So this brace might help with that. Uh, but of course, when you have to add a brace and you have to move up to 4S batteries um, as a way of coping with weight, now you're solving weight by adding more weight. It's not ideal. You can also see it does have some heat shrink around the X-T30 here. Uh, that's a 220 nanofarad uh, capacitor to help protect the electronics. Um, that's pretty cool, although it does make the end of this wire pretty inflexible, and that's going to cause a problem uh, for the battery, even if you use Beta FPV's own battery. Uh, when you come through here, it's just, it's really hard to get these to angle all the way around. And so for that, I suggest you trim away some of this heat shrink um, to make it more flexible closer to the connector. Um, Sometimes people put them in this way, uh, but that doesn't work either. This is just not going to reach around, uh, so be aware of that. And the next thing I want to point out is if you can see this screw here, um, that's actually the ESC board screwing into the frame. They've modified the frame so that some screws can go into it for that. Also in the front, you can see that there's now a screw holding the front of the canopy, so that's new. The older frames had these two nubs right here, and so you can see that that has changed. Uh, fun fact, these nubs were here because originally they were prototyping a design where there would be an FPV camera that could hook on here so that you could fly with lower latency. Um, and that just didn't work out, but the nubs survived. Now, when I first heard that they were going to make this, I assumed that they would use the new 12 amp all-in-one flight control ESC board in there, um, but they did not. This is actually version two of the 16 amp BL Heli 32 ESC. So this is a two board stack with the ESC and the flight controller, uh, just like the original 85X, only now the ESC is even beefier and hopefully solid on 4S. That's the reason they use this. Uh, Beta FPV is determined to make this reliable on 4S uh, without having any more fires. And some people have had failures with this flying on 4S. I flew this uh, with two inch props on 4S, no problem. And you saw that in a previous video. Uh, I did burn out one of these flying 4S on three inch props, but I was admittedly pushing my luck with that. One thing that I think is cool is that this stack is no longer connected with header pins. They used to use uh, pins like this to connect the two boards, uh, but rigid connections like that are just asking for trouble. Uh, they could vibrate loose or come loose in an impact, and that was one of the sources of failure. Uh, but the two boards are actually connected with a flexible ribbon between the two. And not only that, but the flight controller connects to the video transmitter and the camera and the receiver. Everything is plug and play. So you should be able to assemble one of these from scratch without any soldering. Then looking in here, you can see that the Tarsier camera system actually has another two board stack. And that's a 20 by 20 stack, but it's rotated 45 degrees in this cavity here. And these screws are what's holding that stack together. It is not attached down to the flight controller. It's held by the canopy 
and the video transmitter is also held in the canopy. It's a triangle shape, uh, similar to the one in the trash can, and then it goes out to this giant antenna in the back. Um, I've never seen this exact style of antenna before. I have no idea what it is. Uh, to me, it looks like a downgrade. In the previous model, they had an actual uh, Lumineer Micro Axi antenna, which is a really nice antenna. For me, personally, I'd rather just have a lightweight dipole on here. Um, I don't fly whoops like this long range. Um, to me, the purpose of this frame is to fly uh, close to myself, close to obstacles, close to people, and so I find that a dipole works just fine. And then the camera here in front pivots on this screw right here. The bottom one is FPV and the top one records HD. And you'll notice that this is much farther forward than in the previous 85X, and that is good because it means that you can angle the camera to get a lower angle and still not get the props in view. So that should help with slower flying, and in fact, I flew with a pretty low angle when I was doing that chase camp footage. All right, now let me show you how to actually start recording with this. The first thing you're gonna need, of course, is a micro SD card. Uh, make sure it's one that's relatively fast. The next thing you're gonna need is an iPhone or Android device, and you're gonna have to download the Cadex FPV app. There's more than one Cadex app, so make sure it's the one that looks like this. All right, plug in a battery, and then look for these two buttons inside of here. The one that is closer to the front of the quad uh, toggles recording on and off when you tap it. Uh, this light flashes red when it's recording. Uh, but first, you need to press it in and hold it for several seconds until you see a light start flashing on the left-hand side of the quad, this light right over here, and that indicates that Wi-Fi has been enabled. Then go to the Wi-Fi settings on your phone and find the network called Cadix followed by some number. You're gonna to have to join that network and enter the password. This part I never would have guessed except that I saw a review of this camera by Albert Kim. Uh, so thank you, Albert. The password is 12345678. Now you can launch the app and tell it to connect. And what we're seeing is a live HD view from the camera. Um, there's a little bit of latency, of course, but that's not too bad, and it's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, after you've recorded, you can even replay the videos on here. When I was out at the racetrack, um, I was able to show the video that I had uh, to the guy driving that RC car, and that was cool. I've never had that sort of thing in the field, so you can use the app for that. But for right now, we need to use it to format the SD card. So tap on the gear, and then device settings, SD format, and when it reformats, it will of course delete all of the data on that SD card, so make sure there's nothing important on there. Um, and then it changes the format of the SD card. Um, I have an SD card reader that I normally use with my computer, and after formatting it in here, I can no longer read it in my computer. It can only be read by this. To get the data off of the card, I used the USB connection on the DVR, and it's right above the SD card. That's different than the USB in the bottom, which is for Betaflight. This one uh, connects to the computer, and if you've got the SD card in there, it's just like connecting a thumb drive or something like that to your computer. To wrap up, I do want to show you some more of that car chasing footage, because that was super fun. Um, but also, I want to make sure you know there is a link to this drone and all of these components, and those links are down in the video description below. So, hope this has been interesting to you. I hope this has helped you to know what you need to know about the Beta 85X 4K Happy Flying. What down, they